Hi, welcome to Inside Indy. I'm Kelly Vaughn, and we're going to talk about crime and how to defend yourself. And we have a couple of experts in the studio uh, with us today to help us out. And I, I really need your help because it is a concern of mine whether you see the statistics that you're reading in the paper and, and on social media. We have Michael Valenti. Yes, ma'am. You are the head instructor of the School of Self-Defense. Yes, ma'am. Which is located where? Uh, it's located on, uh, right in the middle of Carmel. All right, all right. And then we have Amanda Valenti. Uh, your wife, your better half, okay, it was a senior student with the School of Self-Defense. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, off the air, we were talking about statistics, and you said you knew a few numbers that would help people in our community understand where do we stand as a city when it comes to crime? Well, as far as crime is concerned, um, the, I'm, I'm always more concerned with people understanding who, who they're actually likely to be attacked by. Okay. Uh, probably one of the biggest misnomers is that um, you are most in danger walking to your car in the middle of the night. Whereas, I'm not telling you you shouldn't be paying attention, <laughs> but the stats actually show that about 80% of attacks on women are done by someone they know well, Ooh. by boyfriends, friends, uncles, and what have you. Mm -hmm. um, and that about 90 to 95% of all assaults on everybody, not just women, involve the use of some sort of weapon, a knife, a gun, a bat. How many? Um, about 90 to 95%. Wow. A very lar a large percentage of, especially um, like street assaults, like muggings and things like that, are mm -hmm. going to involve the use of some sort of weapon. Mm, that's scary. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. So, so how do we become prepared, especially when we're talking about it's somebody we know, because I might not be armed yes, or able to defend myself because I don't even see it coming. Absolutely. Well, the, obviously the, the most important thing is, is to have a good knowledge of what are the signs that lead up to a violent um, relationship uh -huh. ahead of time is really important. Being able to oh, recognize wow. violence in individuals. You are so deep. Okay. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, under, and understanding that psychology, because the thing is, the longer you are in an abusive relationship, the harder it is to get out of it. So the sooner you can recognize that things are going south, the easier it will be for you to remove yourself from it. Um, and see, I didn't see this coming because I was just thinking we're going to talk about, as you said, you're in your car, you're yeah. in the parking lot, right. somebody attacks you. And you're telling me something totally different that I didn't anticipate. Well, wow. If you think about things that people traditionally think of as self-defense tools. You know, they got pepper spray, maybe they're gonna hold their keys and try to jab at somebody with that. Those are a lot more powerful tools towards a scenario that's a lot less likely. You know, if a stranger grabs you at an ATM, absolutely, pepper spray in the face, you know, knee him in the groin, you can do whatever <laughs> damage you want to get out of there because you don't know that person. But if you're thinking about, you know, uh, I don't know, your drunk uncle who is, you know, getting a little too rough mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or something like that, you don't want to pepper spray him. <laughs> so something like that, that's, that's pretty rude next Because then mama's, your mother's going to be mad yeah. because you pepper sprayed your, her brother. Yeah. Right? So something like, you know, hand-to-hand <laughs> -hand self defense, which is a huge part of what we specialize in, becomes a lot more important because then you can kind of take care of the person while you're also taking care of the situation. Okay. Yeah, and so when it comes to the actual study, the, the number one thing that I always tell people is that you want to be looking for a long-term study of martial arts or a long-term study of self-defense. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of places out there that have three easy lessons or a two-hour course. And um, the truth is these don't really get you prepared. I call it empowering without giving true power that uh, we're talking about you defending yourself against a bigger, stronger, more powerful opponent. And you really can't learn to do that in three easy lessons. There are some people who study martial arts for months and months and months and months and months and still can't beat a bigger, stronger, more powerful opponent. That weight, that strength, that size, mm -hmm. that plays a huge role in self-defense. And the only way you can become good against that is when all the odds are stacked up against you is you have to stack the odds back up against them. And that takes time. I always say, just think about any martial arts instructor. Okay, so there's a lot of them out there who teach three easy lessons and you know, just watch this DVD and you'll be good sort of mindset. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How many of those teachers only took three easy lessons? None right, of them. Yeah. All of them, all of them believe in long-term training because that's what they do for themselves. And I would think that the long-term training, which really means lifetime training, because just like working out, you know, you don't yes. want to have all this training and then suddenly one day it happens. It's like, I knew how to do this, but I haven't done it in a while. So, wow. I have so many questions 
Because, and, and I want to be real about this, because you're right, when you, you see something that's offered like a three-day course, mm -hmm. and I've always thought in the back of my mind, okay, but if I learn that, am I really going to remember to use it? That's my fear, is that I'm going to forget what I was trained to do, and oftentimes the real-life scenario may not quite play out the way that it's maybe being taught. It will never play out the way that it is taught. Okay. <laughs> so how do we defend ourselves? And let me say this before you answer that. The reason I'm so passionate about this because I think that women especially, and I know everybody's victimized, male or female, Absolutely. but women especially, that we are obviously physically weaker. And so I've never understood that if we know our disadvantages, we're also, I think, very emotional beings. So if I know I have that, if it's like a handicap, how come my parents or anybody's parents does, they don't train their girls to defend themselves. And if you sit around and watch forensic files like I do and you see, you know, we're getting knocked off over and over again. And I'm thinking, what if they had known something different? It's almost like we don't even have the, the thought to try to fight back. Like, oh, well, he's bigger than me or whoever. I'm just, I should just die. I mean, you know, and you hear every now and then there's a victim who fights back, who mm. goes, they might die, but I'm going to die trying. So some of it's psych psychological and some of it's physical. So if you have that, if you have that disadvantage, how come we're not trained to, f to be prepared? What's really crazy is when you hear about those victims that fight back, they always make the news. Why, why is that news that somebody fought back when they were being attacked? That's right. really sad. Right. That yeah. it's a rare occurrence. Yeah, yeah, the, the I truth, agree. The truth is that um, it's just, it's a cultural thing. A lot of people relate um, aggression and violence um, and strength as masculine characteristics. But all of us who are, you know, we, we, we all know that, you know, mothers are incredibly strong. It's, it's a feminine characteristic. Oh, my Every bit just of, throw the shoe. Yeah. <laughs> and the you know, broom. It's, yeah. it's, it's a feminine characteristic as, as well. Um, I had a woman one time come up to me and ask me, uh, to teach her like three-year-old daughter how to do self-defense and I don't teach kids I don't think it's really appropriate to have a kid throwing eye jabs in the middle of the playground okay. Uh, okay. But, but she asked well, what do I do to get him, get her prepared for bullies and I said well does uh, do you have a son she said yes I said or abductions I'm thinking yeah I said does the dad wrestle with the son and she said uh, yeah of course mm -hmm. I said does anyone wrestle with the daughter and, no no and that's the difference is that that same play that prepared me as a child to protect myself on the playground was just my dad wrestling with me. It's the same thing that, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. you know, it just ingrains in the person the idea of fighting back. Lots of times when women come into my class, I almost have to teach them the whole point of a fight. You know, like when people are protecting themselves, their, their normal thought is, I need to get away, right? But that's actually not how you protect yourself. It's that you are retargeting the attacker, that they are now the victim and you are the assailant. And that's the only way you actually get away. Now, I agree. Because I can remember, I went to the University of Washington in Seattle. And they had a, a course on, co at, on campus. And I remember being in the self-defense class for the campus kids. And the lady was like, okay, now you want to hit him here so you can get away. And you, can, you just want to injure him. And I remember, and I said it out loud. I said, no, I want to kill him. <laughs> and everybody laughed. They thought it was funny. But I was thinking, why are they thinking... You know, and even if I didn't kill him, my mind is on, I, I, I'm attacking, counterattacking. I'm yeah. not just trying to get away. So I thought I was crazy because everybody was like, we just kind of want to hurt him. Like they knew they could control yeah. the outcome. Yeah, I, yeah. I've, I've always said, don't, don't fight because you're protecting yourself. Fight because you're offended that they thought you were a victim. Mm, okay, I like that. Okay, <laughs> I like that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a certain amount of being angry and... Um, even when I, when I do go out on a parking lot at night, I walk like I have an attitude. I walk like I wish you would come over here. I I, and, and I just carry myself that way. It, it's, a, it's a defense mechanism. So, you know, and it's kind of like, you know, you're walking hard. And I got this thing like, yeah, I'm mad. And I wish you would say something to me. I'm really, <laughs> I'm really just trying to get from the parking lot at Walmart alive. But... I d immediately get out of my car and I think, I wish somebody would step this way. I'll cut you. I ain't got no knife. Okay. Yeah. But that's my mindset. Is that, is, am I crazy? Is no, nobody else does that? No, that, no. That's, that's actually, <laughs> that's, that. that's actually, <laughs> it, it's just fine. Here's, 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 I just hope thing. I don't run into you at Walmart, right? Here, here, here's, here's the thing, okay? Um, I'm, I'm going, it's kind of trivial, trivializes this a little bit, but it makes it, puts it in a good perspective. 
who, you or anybody watching, who wants to have a hard day at work? Who wants to have just yeah. a really difficult day at work? None Nobody. of us. No. We always want an easy day at work. Remember that, a, uh, that mugging people is a job to them. This is a part of how they make their money. Okay. Now I know it's, it's crazy, right? <laughs> it is incredible. I mean, he's telling me stuff I never even but, thought but, about. But, but, you, but it's true, though, right? That this is one of the ways that these people get money is by mugging people, right? Well, if you make it look like you are going to make their job hard, they'll just move on to somebody else. That makes sense. So that is. I've heard people say it, but that's real. Absolutely. That is real. Absolutely. Uh, the 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 one of the uh, there's this great study that was done in the 2000s where they interviewed 100 convicted rapists and they find out found out like what they what they looked for what they didn't look for what they tried to stay away from oh, and gosh. one that, that always stood out to me was that every single one of them all 100 said said things like umbrellas made them really nervous because that could be used against them just the mere thought that this person would have a tool to fight back made it so that they weren't targeted interesting which doesn't excuse someone from studying the actual physical side of self-defense you still need to know how to protect yourself right. because there's still crazy people out there but as far as the assailant on the street um it, they attack people who are vulnerable you know there's not a wild animal on earth that targets the healthiest zebra they go after the weaker one the right. one that looks like it's going to be an easy day's work so my little attitude might come in handy that's a great yeah. attitude yeah. i love it yeah <laughs> now, i was robbed actually uh maybe three years ago in my sister's driveway oh she's gonna kill me for saying that okay <laughs> cut no <laughs> so, but um i was sitting there looking at my phone and um somebody came up to the side of the car he was fully masked and he banged on the door mm -hmm. and he says open up the door and i go you know, I thought it was my niece joking, and I turned around, this guy completely masked. And all I could think was, dang, how did he get me? Because yeah. I, I, I pride myself, it's like, you're not going to get me. Mm -hmm. And he got me. And I, and I thought, what do you do? you got a split second to say, do I try to start the car? He's got a gun. Mm -hmm. So I opened the door, which was locked. It was locked. My window was up. And I just thought, okay, okay, this is how it happens on forensic files. This is how you end up dead. And so I thought he was going to shoot me. I said, is he going to shoot me in the head? Is he going to shoot me in the shoulder? And he just asked for stuff, you know, money. And I was digging through my purse and trying to get things, which he should have known that was a disaster. And so then finally, I think he thought he got money. And then he just said, um, have a nice day and closed the door and took off. But this is like 11 o'clock at night. Nobody drove by. People are always driving by in the street. But I was terrified. And I think over and over again, what could I have done differently? And I don't know. I had no weapon. I had nothing. Uh, he got me. Well, let, well let's, let's make one thing very clear. You're alive today, right? Yeah. So you made the right decision. Mm. Right? Yeah. If someone is brandishing a gun and they want to shoot you, they want to shoot you, they would have already shot you. Usually if someone's pointing a weapon at you, they want something from you. Give it to them. It's not worth your life. Mm -hmm. You know? Now, if they give you some other order, get on the ground, you know, come with me, then we're fighting back, hardcore. But if all I have to do to make them go away is hand me my the hand in my wallet, it's, it's, this is this easy, okay? I mean, I can, I can hand some my wallet and then go right to my bank and cancel everything, right? right. I, don't, I don't need to risk getting shot or right. risk getting stabbed or risk, risk getting hurt, you know, just to protect the pieces of paper in my pocket. Right. But to protect your life, on the other hand... Um, you know, that's really important. And that's in, um, that's but, what we talk about situation awareness and conflict de-escalation. A part of conflict de-escalation mm -hmm. is understanding where's the line, where, where, at what point am I actually going to fight back against this person, you mm -hmm. know, and there are, and we cover that in our class at nauseum about different times where it's appropriate, and inappropriate, <sighs> when you should and should not. Um, and understanding the psychology of an attacker. Wow, this is so refreshing. And I've had people come in and talk about self-defense before, but never like you guys. So we're going to take a break. When we come back, they're going to actually show me and show you how to protect yourself and how I might have better done an even... I would have liked to have gotten the guy, actually. <laughs> <laughs> a better job. And he says, I'm alive. Thank God. Uh, we'll talk about that and more when we come back.
back with Michael and Amanda, and they're from the School of Self-Defense. And we've been um, talking about the psychology of defending yourself, and that a lot of it starts in a person's mind. Absolutely. Um, the, one of the major things that I try to tell people is that when you're tr when you are in the situation where you're actually having to physically defend yourself, you almost have to have a disregard for your own safety. The idea is not that you are defending yourself; it's that you are attacking back. Mm. Is that you're the person who's attacking you is now your victim. And you can only really get this kind of mindset through the long-term training as opposed to short-term training. Because if you're doing this as a part of your daily life, just like you would exercise or something like that, um, it becomes that you are no longer fearful of the violence, that it is a part of your day, that to you it's just another day in the gym. I've had several of my students have the misfortune of being attacked. Mm -hmm. All of them, 100% of them, ended the fight in under three seconds. That's one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. You're wow. safe. All of them said they experienced no panic and that they didn't have to think about what technique needed to be done. It just did it on its own because they were so used to it. And that you can only get through that long-term training. Okay. Love it. Love it. So you're going to teach us some techniques today. Can we give a couple of scenarios? Absolutely. So 90% okay. of all assaults, particularly on women, end up on the ground. Um, if you mm. think about most like rape scenarios, obviously that's going to be down there. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through a basic maneuver that uh, a man is going to demo on me about how to turn the table on a rapist. Okay, okay I, I want to see this. So yeah. we're going to start, start on the ground. So um, there's a lot of things that lead to you being in this situation here um, mm -hmm. that um, obviously we'll talk about in the Self-Defense 101 course. But once we're actually here in this situation where the guy's between your legs, he's trying to take the pants off, okay. we can turn the situations using a really basic maneuver. So what she's going to do is she's going to first eliminate the space from me. This way I can't pull back against her. Wow. Then with a simple maneuver with her legs that once again we'll teach here, Whoa. flips me over here and she's on top of the plank. That's an eye gouge. I think that was an elbow. That's I couldn't see what was going on. <laughs> uh, and then she stands up. And if I try to get up, you know, she can do whatever she wants to me here as I'm wow. trying to get up. And so done in just a little bit more real time that if I'm down, down here, just like this. Wow, that comes in handy in a lot of scenarios, actually. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Wow. So I guess then, I guess part of when we see that we think, okay, you're, you're stronger mm -hmm. and, and it almost doesn't look real. So what is it about that that actually allows her to overcome the your strength. One word. Leverage. Physics. Leverage. <laughs> Leverage. Leverage. Absolutely. It's a force that you cannot see, but you cannot resist. And I would think it being unexpected because typically a, a guy that was raping somebody or attempting to rape someone wouldn't expect that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this technique was developed by a guy by the name of uh, Helio Gracie in the 50s. He was 133 pounds and had asthma, and he was also one of the greatest martial arts champions um, okay. ever. Um, okay. So very small man could beat very larger men just using leverage. Okay. So you're going to teach me something here, Yes, right? ma'am, okay. absolutely. So what am I doing? I'm going to have to put my papers um, down here. So for, first I'm going to show you the footwork, and then I'm going to show you how it, how it applies, okay. okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to take your left foot, and you're going to step it back like this. Okay. And then you're going to drop your head, and then you're just going to unwind. Mm -hmm. okay. Keep your head low through the entire unwinding motion. So we call this dancer. Do this one more time. Take the step back, drop your head low, keep it low as you unwind. Now bring your head back up. Okay. okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you some of the situations where this is very effective. So I'm going to okay. have you face this way here. Okay, so this is called the escort position. So I come behind you, I say, you're coming with me. Okay. So I want you to take that same step, come underneath, and just push right through. Boom. Just ah. like this. So we're going to do that a little bit more live here. Okay? okay, so I just want you to do it quickly. Okay, so okay. I'm here, I try to make you move with me. And just like that, wow. okay. you're moved out of the way. <laughs> it's kind of like a duck. Yeah. Like a, I, and you feel like I'm ducking. But the thing yeah. is, this, what we like to do is something called motion grouping. One thing solves several problems. So I'm going to put you in a choke. You're going to do the exact same. I'm not actually going to squeeze because okay. obviously I like you. Okay. But <laughs> I'm here. I want you to do the exact same. And then I might. <laughs> yeah, I want you to do the exact same motion. Oh. So mm -hmm, just okay. take, take this step and step it behind. Duck your head out. And then you're out just like this. Oh. Okay. Now, as you make that movement, now don't actually do it. But just pretend that you're striking me in the groin. You can use any hand you want. Okay. Just on your way through. You'll see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You can hit there. Make the step. You can use your other hand here if you want to hit there. Ah. Bam. 
Okay. okay. That makes sense? Yeah. Makes and so, so that motion. I'll try that at home tonight. <laughs> now, she, she, now, she's, once again, she's done the, the long-term training, so I can get as aggressive as I want with her. Okay, so I'm really going to pull her back, and you're going to see how quickly she can get out of here. So I'm here. Just pull back here. Oh, girl. Okay. So, <laughs> right. I love, I love this. <laughs> so, and that's leverage. Now, instead of her resisting me, she goes with the motion, since I'm pulling backwards, right? Push in this situation. And some people worry about getting hung up here, but you notice the groin strike uh, <laughs> makes it a little harder to hold okay. on there. That makes sense? Yeah, yeah. And I guess though, again, getting back to the psychology of it all is that oftentimes women have this thing about, oh, I don't want to hurt you. And that thing of, and, and even I, you know, I'm tempted to feel that way, but I have to say, no, I want to hurt you. If I have to kill you, that's okay. And, I, and it's almost like we, we can't go to war, don't go to war. And so it's interesting to me how, like, the fact that we can't even go to war. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know some women, we are now, but I'm just saying, you know, it's always been like, you can't go there. Yet they never thought, like, if somebody comes inside your home, that's war. Absolutely. And, and I want to win. And so it's interesting how they say, oh, don't go to war, but nobody wants to protect you. Or people would not want you to die in your own home. And to me, your home is no different than your country. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Oh, tell me you've got a minute. So how can people sign up for uh, what you're offering? This is awesome. You awesome. guys are well, awesome. Well, right now we got a really great, it's a 13-week course. Um, it's called Self-Defense 101. You can sign up at our website, theschoolofselfdefense.com. We're also on YouTube and Facebook and Twitter, so you can check us out there. Um, and then you can contact us at our phone number. Okay, uh, which is on the screen and the website. Absolutely. Okay. Give, go ahead and give that in case somebody's just listening. And okay. Right. Sorry. The phone number is 317-373-8086. Uh, <laughs> okay. Sounds good to me. Well, we appreciate you both coming in and teaching us. And I feel empowered, though. I know I need the long-term training. Yes, ma'am. And you should do the same. I really want this for our viewers. Take action and defend yourself. No sitting, no sense sitting around crying about the fact that, you know, crime is happening and we're not prepared to be prepared. Thank you so much for joining us. And thank you for joining us. I'm Kelly Vaughn. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.